The earmark of a popular film is that it lives on with a sequel. And then there are movies that should never have had a chance to live on. Get ready as we explore the crazy reasons these sci-fi movies never got a sequel. Chronicle, 2012. By the time found footage horror and science fiction movies had nearly run its course, Max Landis and Josh Trank shot out a pretty solid superhero origin sci-fi-ish story about a trio of high school students transformed into superhumans. Andrew is deeply troubled from the frequent bullying at school. His mother is dying of cancer. His father is a violent booze hound, and he himself isn't helping his odds by using his video camera all the time. Creepy, yeah? Could you not videotape us, please? It's really creepy. Uh, no, I wasn't. Yep, 8 out of 10 cheerleaders agree. His cousin Matt and Steve, the popular shoo-in for high school president, convince Andrew to record a perfectly round hole in the forest. Soon after, they find a mysterious crystalline entity underground. I guess that it's the next day and the guys are experimenting with their new powers, filming jackass stunts with baseballs. But what's better than playing football in the sky in a commercial airline path? The existential question also hangs over their heads. What are the rules of conduct now? Now that they are apex humans. Rule number one, no using it on living things. Rule number two, you can't use it when you're angry. That's it. It's during the formative stage of Discovery that the film does a good job of conveying the excitement of these characters unveiling another possibility that before was previously impossible. After a brief moment of notoriety, Andrew assumes a path towards the dark side, culminating with his mother's death and his father's admonition. And this comes across like Hayden Christensen's Anakin Skywalker swan song tirade. <laughs> Holy shit, he actually looks almost identical to Dane DeHaan. You treated me like shit! You left me alone! So, was Chronicle destined to be an innovative and successful one-off? Or was there ever talk of a sequel? Yes, there was. Before Disney acquired 20th Century Fox in March of 2019, Fox was interested in a follow-up that was a more conventional superhero movie. Max Landis, who was accused of sexual assault in 2017, and his career subsequently went poof, wanted a much darker and more conventional sequel. And Josh Trank actually sabotaged the follow-up by dodging meetings with Fox because, as he said, I was dodgy about stuff because I really didn't even want to see see Chronicle 2 happen. That was my worst nightmare. Trank surely would have jumped off the Space Needle because a script was carved about a girl who became an action hero with a suit of armor. None of this mattered because Disney had no interest in Chronicle 2. Terminator Dark Fate 2019 Sometimes you attempt to alter the future too many times that fate becomes a moot point. Yet this franchise spewed out one classic sequel and a handful of lesser spawn. So there's a meh factor uttered about any of them after Judgment Day. Not dead, but not alive either. I need a vacation. Terminator Dark Fate left audiences with a mealy taste in their palate, and that is if you don't like Mexican food. Grace and enhanced human from an alternate future arise in Mexico City to protect Danny Ramos from a Rev 5 Terminator. And this model is extremely different, but that makes no difference to Sarah Connor, who's now an ad hoc Terminator exterminator. But she's in for an ego check because her first person name dropping elicits crickets from Grace. Against Skynet? The AI that's trying to wipe us all out. I've never heard of it. But there's always a Skynet. The Legion is a royal pain in the ass for Grace's timeline. The way David S. Goye and Justin Rhodes and Billy Ray constructed those overlapping plot lines was marginally interesting, with John Connor out of the picture because Carl, the T-800, finally achieved his mission. So who knows if this triggered Grace's arrival from the alternative timeline. Sarah faces Carl, who had 20 years to repent after liquidating John Connor. I'm reliable. I'm a very good listener, and I'm extremely funny. And that's the second seismic shakeup in an already devastating day. Plus, learning that Danny is the new John Connor, and well, at this point, anything goes, right? It's fitting for Carl that this feels incredibly mechanical, with occasional minor legacy chuckles, nods, and one-liners. Hey, buddy, got a dead cat in there, or what? <sighs> And I'll admit that these did make me chuckle. These weapons will be vital to protect my family. Also, this is Texas. 
Has the Terminator franchise eroded any excitement of offering anything new, even though Dark Fate offered more new wrinkles? Maybe it offered too much in one movie. I personally abandoned giving a shit about Dark Fate two-thirds of the way through. 20th Century Fox felt the same, even though a sequel was discussed. The intention was to tweak Grace's timeline once again, a la Terminator Genesis and Dark Fate, further pushing the envelope into territories audiences apparently no longer find interesting based on Dark Fate's reception. And in conclusion, the fate of a Terminator sequel looks dark. The weight of the material, one wrong choice, it can destroy the look of the entire room. You need butterflies, polka dots, balloons. Please allow me to take a second to ask you to like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content. Unsubscribed viewers make up the majority on the channel, so please show this channel some love so I can keep making entertaining videos for you. And that's it, let's get back to the video. Battlefield Earth 2000. John, what the f are you thinking? Look, I know you wanted to make this movie for 20 years, but when you had the opportunity, you shoved a rat in our face. Do you want lunch? If you're unaware, the movie is based on L. Ron Hubbard's novel, Battlefield Earth, the saga of the year 3000. L. Ron Hubbard is also Scientology's founder and apparently an avid boatsman. But prior knowledge of any of this wouldn't prepare you for this movie. Full stop, the plot is bad. Uh, dogs did prove to be more cooperative than man animals. For some reason, they weren't as useful when it came to manual labor. Really bad. Home planet doesn't even know the gold exists. So those corporate crapheads won't even know we stole it. It's the perfect crime, sir. Like, really, really bad. This is Tell, your chief of security. Exterminate all man animals at will. And happy hunting! The entire visual style feels like an inside joke, but deep down you know that it's earnestly serious. The Cyclos, the stilted and laughable alien race that conquered Earth, are comically inept. I mean, come on, how can you take them seriously? Jim Henson Muppet hands, cod pieces, platform boots, holy f what did the Cyclos evolve from? Trolls? And to put it into perspective, the Cyclos look like this in retro concept art. Even though some fantastic actors like Barry Pepper, Kim Coates, John Travolta, and Forrest Whitaker, and how did they get Forrest Whitaker on board? The cast alone couldn't elevate Battlefield Earth. Connections to the Church of Scientology, then embroiled in controversy, tasted like rotting fish to the studios, as well as parents who feared that the movie was a tool for indoctrination. No one would touch it. Finally, Morgan Creek Franchise Pictures and JTP Films raised an estimated budget of 73 million schmackers. Rumors rumbled as the crew complained about malnutrition despite the smackaroos. And risking a complete mutiny, Travolta spent millions of his own money to improve the catering situation. But it was franchise pitchers who would be the glutton. Allegedly, $29 million went missing, like a Pentagon black budget, which resulted in franchise pitchers being obliterated by lawsuits. And, of course, the movie bombed. If it had ears, they'd be burning. But in the case of all pain, all gain, Battlefield Earth won seven Razzies. Remember, they're just jokes. We're all gonna die soon, and there's no sequel. So... And I'd like to thank the Razzie Academy for not awarding Forrest Whitaker not one statue. Despite all the bad press and notoriety, Travolta praised his film as good as Schindler's List and even better than Star Wars. <laughs> And he said in interviews that he wanted to make two sequels. And are you going to do that? Yeah. Yeah, next For year. For sure, it's positive. Yeah. For next year, and uh, we'll tell the rest of the story. And still, Travolta, to this day, maintains that Battlefield Earth is his masterstroke. Not Saturday Night Fever, not Pulp Fiction, but Battlefield Earth is his Scientology scope opus. So wrap your head around that one. E.T. The Extraterrestrial, 1982. I don't know if it's because of the Mandela effect, but I was under the impression that E.T. had a sequel. Well, that's my cross to bear. But imagine the pressure to follow up with a sequel to this blockbuster. Spielberg and Melissa Matheson, the screenwriter of E.T., went through the motions of spitballing ideas for a sequel, resulting in a nine-page outline entitled E.T. 2 Nocturnal Fears. What they envisioned was a polar departure from E.T. Nope, no bike rides across a full moon and no illumination of heartlights in this draft. Turn on your heart
Nocturnal fears introduced aliens with sinister red eyes and sharp fangs, and who eviscerate animals and children. These entities intercepted E.T.'s distress call from before and descend upon the Earth. I suspect Elliot communicates with E.T., who arrives to save his friends, defeat the aliens, and then bugger off again. Obviously, this sequel didn't go ahead, and Spielberg felt icky about a sequel, and particularly this sequel idea. And he stated, sequels can be very dangerous because they compromise your truth as an artist. I think a sequel to E.T. would do nothing but rob the original of its virginity. Out. Spaceballs, 1987. In a galaxy very, 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 very far away came Spaceballs. The classic 1980s sci-fi comedy is definitely high up on Mel Brooks's tour de force list as producer, writer, and star. And hopes are high that this parody would fare well riding on the coattails of the original Star Wars trilogy. God willing, we'll all meet again in Spaceballs 2, the search for more money. Well, that didn't happen, and the reasons are many. True, Spaceballs attained cult status, but the movie's initial box office returns were modest. Something studios would have considered seriously regarding the investment in a sequel. Rumor control indicates that Mel Brooks was satisfied with how Spaceballs turned out and didn't feel the want or need to follow up on his Star Wars parody. Also, at the time, the original trilogy had been released, and this limited the material he could riff on. And Mel, he's just a busy man, what with producing other projects from Broadway to film, as well as booking voice gigs. More ominous are the mortal vacancies left in the cast, including, most notably, John Candy as Barf. This door? You the mean outer door. The outer door. Yes. Because there's nothing on this one. <laughs> In the seven year span between Spaceballs' release and Candy's passing, a sequel could have happened easily. However, the reasons already listed placed Eagle 5 on blocks. Add to this that Rick Moranis has since ostensibly quit acting. For me, the inclusion of SCTV alumni Moranis and Candy were the best things about Spaceballs. Otherwise, I felt the movie was a little too schlocky for my taste, but there are a couple standouts, like the ludicrous speed scene and how Dark Helmet face plants against the bulkhead. Are you alright, sir? Fine. How have you been? Fine, sir. Good. And, of course, combing the desert scene, which w wouldn't be allowed today. What about you guys? We ain't found shit! Is the second time that I laughed throughout the entire movie. And I'd be remiss if I overlooked Michael Winslow's brief appearance. <laughs> shit! So, no Spaceballs 2, eh? Huh, <laughs> loosen that seatbelt. Because a sequel was confirmed in 2023, and as recent as last month, Amazon MGM will be producing it. Josh Gad, not Mel Brooks, is credited as one of the writers and will star as a which character? Well, that still remains kind of fuzzy. The film will lampoon Disney's abysmal Star Wars treatment and capitalism. Will it work? Will you watch it? Let me know in the comments down below. It's gonna be here. Works. Were you part of the tribe that actually wanted to see Battlefield Earth 2? Would E.T. Nocturnal Fears have besmirched E.T.'s innocence? And is the Terminator franchise dead to rights? Sound off in the comments and let me know. Show this channel that you care by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And I will catch you in the next one.